before we begin formally uh, i'll request the members of the audience to kindly keep off their mics and videos good afternoon on behalf of national science center delhi i am kailash chandra welcome you all in this program i'm sure that most of you have may have visited our national science center which is a unit of national council of science museums under the ministry of culture government of india we uh, have around 25 science centers all over the india which are governed by the national council of science museum popularly known as nccm so today on the eve of 73rd republic day celebration we are here with another program and we have invited air vice marshal surakan chintaman safekar ji for delivering the lecture himalaya adventures uh before we start <clears throat> i'll just give you a, a brief story about and uh, uh, some insight of the lecture what we are going to ha may have and uh, this program uh, for this program we have specially called uh, uh, chintaman sir and he was the officer who has done some adventurous uh, sortie uh, in 2008 which he'll explain in detail later on and how it all began what were the factors behind his motivation to do uh, this kind of sortie were the seniors all on the same platform was he allowed to do this this kind of adventurous sortie or the landing at the high altitude all inside of this story will be told by uh, air vice marshal surakan chintaman chafika sir chafika sir uh, welcome to the program and um, you are online now hope you thank can, you yeah you can hear us yes okay absolutely yes so uh, we have uh, today's audience from various scientific schools various public schools in and around delhi and we welcome you all students and teachers and uh, before we formally begin to uh, listen to the adventure story of uh, from this chavika sir uh, i request my colleague uh, sri rakesh tripathi to kindly uh, introduce uh, and say few words about uh, air vice marshal Surakan Chintaman Chakravarti sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Namaskar to all. <clears throat> uh, today, basically, I am feeling very privileged to introduce Air Vice Marshal Retired Surakan Chakravarti, Ati Vishist Seva Medal, Sorya Chakra, retired as a senior air and administrative staff officer of Maintenance Command. So, sir, is there with us? actually my sir was commissioned in a transport stream of air indian air force and during his meritorious service he has flown more than 7000 hours on various types of aircraft which is a big achievement the air officer and alumni of defense service staff college wellington he is an expert in air maintenance with specialization in himalayan region that's why the today's topic of talk is himalayan adventure he has executed trial landing of an 32 aircraft at high altitude advanced landing ground like dolat beg only which is world's highest air strip at elevation of 16700 feet neoma at 13500 feet and fukchi at 14300 feet he has a vast experience in the field of humanitarian assistance and disaster relief under his able leadership support was provided to needy during uttarakhand flood relief yaman evacuation he was forefront in induction of c13 globe master and c130 super hercules aircraft in indian air force he commanded a transport squadron at chandigarh and was air officer commanding of air force station chandigarh a premier transport base he was chief operation officer in agra the largest base in indian air force he held various operational appointment at air headquarter a recognition of his operation capability the air officer was awarded shorya chakra 
a gallantry award by president of india in recognition of his professional courage untiring speed and meticulous planning and execution of trial landing at dolat beg aldi an air strip of immense strategic importance close to china border and was awarded ati vishisht seva medal for distinguished devotion to duty he contributed immensely in kargil operation also a vice master for retirement post retirement is actively involved in training the youth for service selection board interviews free of cost he conduct training program of personality development leadership and is he is a very good motivator he is a defense analyst and regularly his article are published in magazines and the newspapers he has a youtube channel the title of the channel is shank nag for social awareness his memoir sheets of blue war published in november 2021 i recommend all students and audience to basically please read this sheets of blue he had a he had <coughs> very good career in indian air force let's listen the shorya poon gatha from this distinguished air warrior so welcome to the talk and i formally introduce you and over to you you can start your lecture thank you all thank you all and you should start sir thank you <coughs> thank you very much i can see few very young boys and girls who have yet not uh, muted their uh, please mute your audio because it will disturb others tommy arcade boy please mute yourself you are the Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. I see a lot of young boys and girls also. I hope all understand English. If not, I will mix up uh, once in a while in Hindi. Right. So uh, at the outset, I will uh, extend my best wishes to you all for tomorrow's uh, Republic Day, and may this great country keep progressing as it is doing now. further also okay pura bharat desh ek bahut hi samruddh desh hai aapne dekha hoga ki yahan anek cultures hai anek religion hai anek bhashaye hai usi tarah india has got very diverse geography geography to aap jante ho and around with the geography it has got lot of different climates let's take few examples in the south you have the sea all over arabian and indian ocean and the weather there is uh, very sticky lot of sea breeze is there and things like that to the east we have hills but those hills are just about 8000 to 10000 feet lot of greenery arunachal pradesh and things like that to the west we have got desert where the temperature goes to plus 50 degree centigrade and lot of dust storms one dust storm just hit to, uh, yesterday only and came till bombay as you are aware thereafter we have something which is very very unique to our country that is the himalayas himalayas are very very mighty they have got very different tem uh, temperatures different climatic conditions very strong winds and all that so today i am going to talk to you about himalayas you all are sitting in delhi so you are used to the cold but what i am going to talk is much much extreme than what you are seeing some of you must have visited shimla i am very sure must have seen the snow also but we are not talking about that fun snow okay as i go along with my slides i will show you certain pictures and thereafter i will talk about the very important aspect that is the landing at the highest airfield in the world can you uh, anybody guess how much must be the altitude the elevation is 16700 feet this is the highest airfield in the world that is why i call our country a great country there are a lot of good things in our, within our country and i feel privileged that i was born in this country so you should all be so let's start i will show you few pictures and then we will keep 
moving around and then I will show you a wonderful video of my first landing at Daulat Beg Oldi. Okay, it is not landing like at Delhi or Rapur or Pura or Bombay. No, no, it is quite different and you will be surely uh, enjoying what I will be showing to you. So thereafter, we will of course go over question and answers. But let's start at first with a beautiful picture of my aircraft which I flew in my life. That is Antano 32. It is a Russian aircraft. It is a turboprop. Few uh, aircraft are in uh, jet engine, you know. This is a turboprop. Okay, that is popular, you can see that. And, and the background is uh, of Himalaya. And let me tell you, boys and girls, this photograph was taken. Kindly, kindly mute your audio, please. Don't do this. And you can see the background is of Himalayas and it is in the month of May. That is almost summer. So you can imagine what must be in winter. So I'm taking a Himalaya me kya kya khubiya hai. Yahan ke jo mountains hai, pure dunia bhar me sabse uche hai. 18,000 feet से 25,000 feet, 26,000 feet पे भी कुछ कुछ है। दूसरा वहाँ जो valleys है, वो कभी-कभी blind हो जाती है। Means आप सड़क पे जाते हो, अचानक रास्ता बंद हो जाता है, isn't it? We call it T junction। जहाँ से आपको left या right की तरफ करना पड़ता है, आगे नहीं जा सकते। वैसी बात blind valleys है। ये सब कुछ जानना आपके लिए बहुत important है। क्योंकि आगे जो मैं बताने वाला हूँ वो इसपे निर्भर होता है। थोड़ा बहुत साइंस की भी हम बात करेंगे जरूर। वहाँ की जो एयरफील्ड है वो बड़ी छोटी जगह में बनाई गई है क्योंकि बड़े-बड़े ऊंचाई पहाड़ों के बीच ये एयरफील्ड बनी हुई है। हाई माउंटेन से वो सराउंडेड है और वहाँ जहाज चलाना और सबसे महत्वपूर्ण बात यह है कि we are very close to the actual line of control चीन से जो हमारा actual line of control है उससे ये एयरफील्ड बड़ी पास में है इसीलिए इसका सामरिक महत्व भी है it has got strategic importance और ये हमने बताया उधर के जॉग्राफी का थोड़ा बहुत अब हम देखेंगे वहाँ का क्लाइमेट कैसे है? आप तो सारे साइंस के बच्चे हैं, रेरिफाइड एटमॉस्फेयर जानते होंगे। जैसे-जैसे हम ऊपर जाते हैं, वैसे-वैसे एटमॉस्फेयर रेरिफाइड होता है और ऑक्सीजन की कमी शुरू होने लगती है। ऑक्सीजन का प्रमाण कम नहीं होता है, किंतु एक हवा के इसमें यदि आपने एक कंटेनर में रखा, तो so, railway wide atmosphere is a problem, and the engine is a problem. Lack of oxygen is a problem. The temperature is a problem. The temperature is a problem. The winds are very very strong at times due to western disturbance. The winds are almost 120 to 130 kilometers per hour. So what happens? Aircraft performance engine वो डिटेरेट होता है, डिटेरेट यानी कम हो जाता है। जो जहाज दिल्ली में अच्छा पावर दे सकता है, वो वहाँ जमीन पे उतरने के बाद उतनी पावर नहीं दे सकता। फिर वहाँ जो कर्मी होते हैं, वायु कर्मी, या हम जिनको एयर वॉरियर्स या एयरमैन बोलते हैं, वो जहाज पे जो काम करते हैं, तो उनकी वर्किंग यदि जहाज को टच किया तो आप आपकी स्किन को टक जाती है तो आप समझ सकते हैं कितना डिफिकल्ट कंडीशन होगा दूसरी बात यह है कि वहां कोई रेल नहीं रोड नहीं कोई नहीं नेटवर्क ही नहीं है ले ले तक रोड है और इस तक रोड है अभी डीबीओ तक बना हुआ है किंतु 6 महीने वो बंद ही रहता है तो रेल रोड कुछ नहीं है और वहां जो 
करते सैनिक काम करते हैं उनके लिए रोज का अनाज कपड़ा सब कुछ हमें जहाज से ही भेजना पड़ता है और यह सारा काम चंडीगढ़ एफ्यूल बेस से होता है तो तकरीबन हमने एक ब्रिज ही बना लिया है समझा एरियल ब्रिज जिस जो ब्रिज से सारी चीजें उनको पहुंचाते हैं यह एक्चुअल ब्रिज नहीं है बच्चों वो ब्रिज है मीन्स एरियल ब्रिज मीन जहाज ले जाता है सामान और वह ले या तो इसमें लैंड करके सामान देता है या जहाज का पिछला दरवाजा खोल के एयर ड्रॉप करते हैं तो इस सारी चीज को बोलते हैं एयर मेंटेनेंस तो एयर मेंटेनेंस से ही वहां के जवान को रोज का खाना मिलता है कपड़े अम्यूनेशन लड़ाई करने का सामान सब कुछ जहाज से ही पहुंचाया जाता है आप लोगों को अभी तक काफी समझ में आया होगा तो मैं अभी थोड़ी सी जोग्राफी बता दू आपको ये जगह है कहा ये जगह भारत का नक्शा आप देख रहे हैं और ये जो भारत का नक्शा है यहां ऑलमोस्ट फाइव कंट्रीज बॉर्डर मीट्स दट इज चाइना इंडिया तजकिस्तान अफगानिस्तान एंड पाकिस्तान एंड इट इज अमेलगमेशन ऑफ फाइव कल्चर्स चाइनीज इंडियन देन पर्शियन then Gulf region so many many countries culture also meets and this place is known as the roof of the world samjhe na aapke aap aapke building ke roof pe jaate hain to aapko lagta hai ki tarah kuch zyada dikh raha hai ye duniya ka roof top hai itna uncha ye jagah hai to aapko yadi geography pata chali ho to hum aage badhenge aur agla wo dekhenge abhi ye map mein maine aapko wahi cheez dikhai hai kintu यहां तकरीबन यहां दौलत पे गोल्डी है और हम सारे इस रीजन की बात कर रहे हैं बस भारत का उत्तरी इलाका द नॉर्थ मोस्ट पॉइंट ऑफ इंडिया नाउ आई एम शोइंग यू द जे एम के रीजन ओनली सी दिस इज लाइन ऑफ एक्चुअल कंट्रोल इसके दहने तरफ अक्साई चिन्ह है ये पाकिस्तान के पास है ये सक्षम वैली है ये भी पाकिस्तान के पास ये अक्साई चीन चाइना के पास है और ये जो है सक्षम वाली ये है पाकिस्तान के पास किंतु ये इन्होंने अभी चाइना को दे दी तो इस जगह सियाचन ग्लेशियर है और उसके पूर्व में डीपीओ है दौलत बेग ओल्डी द हाइएस्ट एयरफील्ड इन द वर्ल्ड So we will go on further. Now we will see what are the airfields in this area. आप जहां जहां ये सफेद देख सकते हो वो सारे पहाड़ी है तो आपको पता चल जाएगा that there is very less flat portion available. इसलिए यहां जो एयरफील्ड है बस छोटी काफी कम जगह में है और उसके आजू बाजू में बहुत सा ऊंचे पहाड़ है So that is why it is very difficult to operate here. This is DBO. This is Thais. This is Le. This is Chushul. This is Nioma. ये सारे नाम you won't be knowing. Don't bother. And this lake which you see at the east south portion is the Pengangsu Lake. And अभी जो चाइना के साथ मुठभेड़ हो रही थी और we were fighting here. This is the Galwan. तो आप जान लो नयोमा और चुशूल और फुक्चे इतने पास यहां से है ये नाम याद रखिएगा हम जब आगे बढ़ेंगे तब आपको बताएंगे कैसे क्यों मैंने ये नाम आपको बताया ये है सियाचिन ग्लेशियर दिस इज बॉयज एंड गर्ल्स सियाचिन ग्लेशियर आई विल गिव ऑल द डिटेल्स ऑफ सियाचिन ग्लेशियर बट जस्ट आई विलुक एट दिस देर इज नथिंग एब्सोलूटली नथिंग बट स्नो एंड स्नो and when you walk on this you will go till your waist height pure pair andar chale jate hain uske bhi kuch pictures mein aapko zarur dikhaunga ye dekhiye siachen glacier it its length is 70 kilometers 70 kilometers of only snow nothing else altitude 5750 meters to 3620 meters 
पंद्रह से सोलह हजार से ऊपर टेम्परेचर सी एच एम से माइनस सेवेंटी भी जाता है और ये एरिया हमारे लिए बहुत उपयुक्त है और यहां कोई भी रोड और रेलवे लाइन नहीं है यहां के सैनिकों को हम सारा सामान रोज का उनका ब्रेकफास्ट लंच डिनर सब बाय द मींस ऑफ एयर भी ड्रॉप एयर का आपका पिछला दरवाजा खोलते हैं हम ऑक्सीजन लगाते हैं और बड़े बड़े बक्सों में पैराशूट लगा के एक जगह में उसको ढकेल देते हैं तो वो बराबर जाके इनके बेस के पास गिरता है ऐसे इनको खाना मिलता है बच्चों आगे बढ़े ये मैंने आपको बताया था ऐसे जवान वहां काम कर रहे हैं ये कंडीशन दिस कंडीशन इज नोन एज व्हाइट आउट ये जानना आपको जरूरी है क्योंकि जो जिनको पायलट बनना है वैमानिक बनना है उनको जरूरी है क्या होता है In that region there is all snow on the ground, and if the clouding comes and the clouding is white in color, then something everywhere when you are flying you can see only white. Now you don't know which is sky and which is ground. Okay, only by looking at instruments you can make out. So it is like being in a cloud. So that is known as white out. In this condition, flying an aircraft. is extremely difficult very 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 difficult so see the conditions of this people how they operate okay so next now very important aspect of this i will tell you region is uh, you can see some drums and they are wrapped around by some uh, you know there are some parachutes kept over this you know kerosene is a lifeline there i have written there lifeline why why lifeline you must be thinking kerosene and lifeline the temperatures are so low that there is requirement of warming up their area where they live and that warming up is possible only by kerosene in the morning you go for, for some certain duties is it the morning duties you know don't speak in between please question answer later mute yourself okay so kerosene is like friend why because if they want to go in the morning for morning duties even in their fort the water gets changed into ice so if they can't use it so that's why they put kerosene the temperature goes up and then they can use it so kerosene is like a liquid gold there now how to take this kerosene there it is not possible to take it so we take this drums in the aircraft there is a parachute on this drums and we open the door of the aircraft and push this drums and then they fall down and these people collect it so kerosene is their lifeline please remember that because if they have to keep them they warm this is the only way when there is uh, too much of uh, snowing sometimes avalanche takes place a uh, kindly mute yourself kindly mute yourself avalanche takes place and this is how it looks the entire area gets wiped off and lot of snow is there i was telling you how they march somebody has got their audio on please mute it don't disturb others so it is very difficult see they are walking through snow almost waist height now what they do is yes they tie each other kyunki yaha crevasses bhi hoti hai badi badi khaiya bhi hoti hai aur wo dikhti nahi hai to bade saavdhan se chalna padta hai to aise jagah mein road kahan se banao that is why we drop the saman for them some places this helicopters do go but helicopters can carry only very less you know luggage that is why what happens is people tend to helicopters drop these jerry cans like this you can see all jerry cans to around so in short what i'm trying to show you is the life is very 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 difficult okay so if the life is difficult then you have to be a tough person you cannot uh, keep saying destiny destiny my luck is not okay no there we say destiny is not a matter of chance destiny is matter of choice aap kya choices karte ho life mein ye bada important hai 
आपने सोच लिया मैं हारूंगा नहीं आप हारोगे नहीं प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट ये सब यदि आपको पता चला है तो अब हम दौलत बेग ओल्डी एयरफील्ड के पास आएंगे ओके हमने बताया था लाइन ऑफ एक्चुअल कंट्रोल के पास है साउथ में 6 किलोमीटर ईस्ट में 5 किलोमीटर कारापुरम पास इज 13 किलोमीटर सो वेरी क्लोज टू द बॉर्डर वेरी डिफिकल्ट टेरेन ऑल दो थिंग्स वी विल कम अप China keeps moving up and down here, so it is very important for us to have a air failure. That is why in 2008 I decided to reactivate this air field, which was closed for almost 45 to 50 years. Okay, so that is why it is the importance of this air field is there. So let's see something about the Ulla Bank holding. As I told you, boys and girls, this is the highest airfield in the world, and we should be proud about it. The elevation is 16,700 feet. Please note, it is 16,700 feet. The temperatures are ranging from 0 to 48 degrees centigrade minus. There is very very less oxygen. so now we will look at certain science of aviation little bit science we will look at okay so less oxygen means the engine output will be less <coughs> second problem biggest is if you have to land at 16700 feet you cannot switch off your engines now you will ask me why because No aircraft in the world is made to start restart the engines beyond 13,500 feet. याने कोई भी airfield 13,500 feet से ऊपर हो तो वहाँ जहाज का इंजन फिर से शुरू नहीं किया जा सकता। चंडीगढ़ या दिल्ली से शुरू करके आप ले जा सकते हो, बिना बंद करे वापस आइए आ सकते हो। किंतु you cannot restart the engine. Why? You all know engine runs on fuel and oxygen, right? If oxygen content is almost 45 percent less at 16,700 feet, then the engine doesn't get sufficient oxygen. That is why the engine cannot be restarted. There must be few scientists amongst you. So you scientists, please think and make a machine which on ground should give this oxygen to this engine. And very soon we should be able to start also engine there. So this is food for thought for you young people. Then every manufacturer who makes the engine, like AN32 was made by Russia. So they have some certain operating limits. So they have said you should not land above 13,500. Then you will say why I landed? Because it was important for our country to have a airfield there. So. In short, we took military risks and operated this aircraft beyond its limit. Okay? Your car, you have a car, you have a scooter, you have a cycle. Uske operating limits hoti hai na? Ki 100 km ke upar mat jaiye, engine phat jayega. Waisi in aircraft ki bhi operating limits hoti hai. Kintu ham kuch operating limits ko cross karke bhi have to land there. Otherwise, there is no aircraft in the world which can land there. So we have to use what we have, and we are operated AN32 and thereafter C130 also. अब एक काफी खास बात है यहाँ. If there are no roads, then how will you make uh, take the material to make a runway? Can you? No. So the runway is not no, built on. No sir. Or... No sir. So no, sir. okay, okay. Oh, mute your audio. Don't answer me. Okay, I'm just asking you. Just yes. yourself. So, what happens is there is no bitumen or concrete surface. It is a normal ground, something like your football field. So, how do you land on the ground? The aircraft may go inside. So, what they do is the our brave army jawans. They move a road roller on that. And make it, the soil more compact. That is how they have made runway. When I show you photograph, you will able to make out what I am talking about. Then engine becomes loose because the surface is uneven. 
So the aircraft bounces, so a lot of vibrations are there. So it is difficult for the aircraft to land. Engines gets affected by the dust. You know, engines gets affected by dust and the propeller which rotates, sometimes the small, small stone hits them. Right. So you can see the number of limitations were there, still I went and landed there. Why? Just for my country's security. Okay? It was important, it was important. to have an airfield there, so we landed. We landed. So rarefied so atmosphere. Rarefied atmosphere. Uh, why there is an echo now? Okay. High landing speeds, high true airspeed, high mountain ranges, maneuvering is difficult, and dust control of the aircraft. There are all the limitations of all the limitations of the aircraft. Hope you guys have understood till here. If you have understood, then we will move on. And now you can see the airfield. Please look neatly so that you will understand. Where the Daulatabai Goldi is written, to the north of that is that airfield. You can see a light portion. This is the airfield. This is the Karakoram Pass, south end of Karakoram Pass. North is with China. All these mountain ranges are almost 22,000, 25,000 feet. And just behind this hill is China people city. So this is so close and this is Chipchap River, which is always, let me tell you, always it is frozen. Now let me tell you with this map only, when we decided to land here, not many people were ready to do this. We had a meeting, we called the soil expert, the soil expert from Pune, there is a soil expert company in Pune, they came and said don't go here, the aircraft will, uh, the soil will not be able to take the load of the aircraft, this, anyway. The engineer said don't go because you cannot switch off the aircraft. And uh, operating the aircraft within this small space is very difficult, so it may be difficult and you cannot cross China line of actual control. So they said, don't do it. Everybody was saying, don't do it, too dangerous. However, my CNC, that is Western Air Command, Delhi mein jo Western Air Command hai, aapne dekha hota, waha bhai, ek Air Marshal Borgora mere boss te, unko ye idea mera bara persand aya, aur unho ne haa kai diya, is liye mein kar paaya. Aur ye ground ko thik karne ke liye, Lieutenant General Bharadwaj, jo Northern Command ke boss te, Unhone sare apna army lutche logo, they used them and this was made. Very difficult job. I will tell you one very in, uh, interesting thing. When I went to inspect, I had to inspect this. I, when I went to, the, to inspect in a helicopter, when I was walking on this, and the helicopter said, okay, fuel is getting over, come back. So I just took four, five steps very fast. And I felt giddy, my unconscious orada. Then one Jaban gave me oxygen. So if you and me walk here fast, within four to five steps only, we will go unconscious. 45% oxygen less. So the Jawans really worked hard here, okay, and made this happy. Please understand that. So if you have understood all these difficulties, now what I am going to do is show you a video. Please have a look at the video and that is about my first landing. And then what we will do is I will talk more about it and some more in the question answer session. Okay. So, now we can go on to the, you know, uh, video in which you will be able to see what I have said up till now. Otherwise you will not understand and realize how difficult it is. So here is the video, enjoy, sing along but muted.
पेंगान खोले और गलवान सो ऑल दिस थ्री एयरफील्ड वी डिड री स्टार्ट इन सेवेंटीन मंथ बिकॉज ऑफ वेरी गुड यंगस्टर्स एंड जर्नी यू आर गोइंग टू जॉइन प्लीज रिमेंबर बीन इन टू एंड सर्विंग योर कंट्री टू बेस्ट योर एबिलिटी एंड कैपेबिलिटी इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट देर आफ्टर i will just say if you want to read some more stories and there are plenty in my life i can cover in 45 minutes only this view if you are interested in this please read my book shades of blue which is available on amazon okay so for now we will stop here and i will take your question answers i know there will be many so i will say jai hind for the time being and we will go ahead with question answer sessions which will be conducted by the you know yes. by the yes okay so i am all ready for it one by one you should ask questions okay and i'll try and answer it and yes. hope you all enjoyed the activity yes. excellent sir uh, in fact i do feel that the boys and girls who uh, are the budding uh, pilots or th those who will go in the different organs of the indian defense uh, system they will must have motivated and uh, whatever the questions they may have uh, we will take one by one uh, yes you can raise your uh, question first can you can you uh, name yourself and then ask the question i am engineer sir yes please name your uh, give your name and uh, ask the question I am Anina sir. I was asking that. So, yes, tell us the story. You are so, you are studying in which school? I am not studying in the school. Okay. And of a house and my school name is Blue Bell School Petri means Blue Bell Model School. Okay, so please ask question. So he he fought for the India. Do he fought from the airplanes for India? Yes, we do. We do fly fly, fly from airplanes also, but they are fighter planes, and the one which I showed you is the transport aircraft that we yes, use sir. for transporting troops, ammunition, and bombing. That's all. Okay. Next. Yes. Uh, how the he said that uh, the kerosene is so important, like a lifeline. Uh, how it works, like. Okay, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you, beta. See, the they live there in tents or igloos. Okay, so there we have something like a stove. You have seen a stove, kerosene stove. You must not have seen. Okay, you ask your father and mother, they have seen. So it is a structure which is like a kerosene stove, and the kerosene is burnt under that, and it has it is covered by a tin sheet, which reflects the heat. so the kerosene is burned with that the tin sheet is get, gets heated up and they feel warmer in the tent where they live that is why kerosene is important second thing in the morning you go for uh, go to the loo isn't it so you use the pot yes or no mm. <laughs> so there is water in it is there the water freezes so you can't use so you put kerosene in the pot it uh the water gets uh, the ice gets melted and then you use it so for every small activity you require kerosene there because you require to warm up yourself that is why kerosene is a lifeline and it is known as liquid gold people don't feel like eating there because their appetite goes down okay they need to eat very less they are made to compulsory eat okay, okay so that they maintain good health but kerosene is much much more important for them that's why i said it is a lifeline for them okay uh, uh, okay now let somebody ask the question yeah now, yeah other... yes sir on behalf of these all uh, young boys and girls i have a question tomorrow yeah. we are celebrating our 73rd republic day and we have heard that because 15th august is the 75th independent day so there there will be yes. 75 uh, aeroplanes i mean different kind of aeroplanes including rafael and others 
So, uh, can you ins give some insight uh, what kind of planes will be there tomorrow morning, Definitely. 26th January? You know, we have uh, basically in Air Force, we have three types of aeroplanes. One is fighter aircraft, other is transport aircraft, and third is helicopters. Okay. Now, tomorrow you are going to find all the three types in different formations. You will have uh, even very old aircraft which are not anymore flying. However, one one aircraft has been retrieved uh, to just for this show, like Dakota aircraft, the transport aircraft, which was not there earlier. Okay. There are other fighter aircrafts, Wapiti and other ones. So few have been retrieved and they will be flying. So the formation mostly will be with Su 30s, MiG 29s, Jaguars. Rafals and in transport it will be IL-76, C-17, C-130 that is Hercules, Avros, Dakotas and Dorniers and even AM-32. Okay. So and helicopters we will have Chinook flying in formation three of them. We will have three Mi-17, V-5 flying uh, the flags of India and three services and we will have other uh, Apache we will have and other B-35 and B. So in short you can say whatever the number of aircraft we have on inventory of Indian Air Force, Army and even on the inventory of Navy, they all will be displayed tomorrow and doing an aerial display tomorrow and like this almost 75 or more than that aircraft are going to fly on the Rajpath and let me tell these boys and girls that formation flying it is very difficult to see that formation flying is a very difficult activity maintaining looking at the aircraft in the correct position takes lot of skills mental ability physical ability and it is a very difficult activity so these people practice for many days and maintenance of timing for the fly pass is also very very difficult to uh, see as it is very easy but you have to man maintain at the hundredth of second otherwise two aircraft will come, two formation will come very close and the whole show will go back. Okay. So formation flying is very difficult so what you are going to witness tomorrow you should observe all these things and remember that it is a skill, very, very difficult skill which is acquired by a lot of practice precision and this also helps in warlike situation. Sir, so do that the, will be the general fly pass. Yeah, do these uh, aircraft take off from Sarsawa, from Ambala or Chandigarh or the different yeah, locations? These aircrafts cannot take off from one place. So there are many, many airfields from which they take off. Few take off from Chandigarh, most of the transport and helicopters take off from Chandigarh, few take off from Hindan, few take off from Jodhpur, few take off from Pune, few take off from Burj. They take off from all over our country because the congestion at one airfield cannot be managed. So from different, different, that is why timing, maintaining timing is very, very difficult. And that is why they hold at different, different places and then the formation. Yes, yes, yes next question. Sir, you can... Yes, please. Sir, I have a question. When, yeah. Uh, my question is, when he was going back to the helicopter and he ran four or five steps, so how his oxy cells oxygen get 45% less? I told you beta at Delhi, elevation, you don't know I will elevation is the ground at which you start. At. The airfield I was was at 16,700 feet that high on a mountain. So as you go up, oxygen reduces. So there the oxygen was 45% less and we require oxygen throughout. So if I breathe 45% less, what will happen to me? I will Go unconscious only. That is why you have to learn in your science book. This thing is given. Please ask your father and mother. They will explain you what is lack of oxygen. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. 
My name is Navya. I wanted to ask, uh, in the Himalayas, what is the highest temperature it can reach? Lowest temperature, I think she means. <laughs> Lowest. No, no, sir. Highest. 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 Okay. Higher, higher beta, it goes uh, even 12 degrees, 20 degrees at lay, but depends on what uh, uh, elevation you are talking. Lay is at 10,000 feet, there the maximum temperature sometimes is even 18 to 20 degrees. But at DPO, the maximum temperature is never below, above zero. Okay. So, higher you go, the temperatures are lower. So, it is different. <laughs> Please move Excuse yourself. me, sir. I am uh, Dhruv from class 7. Uh, I study in RPS International School. I wanted to ask, as you said that there were no roads, so how was the airfield made? The airfield like that, the machine was, was needed. Said, oh, no, the machine was There was no machine. The only road roller was dropped by a helicopter. The center portion. And then they put some wood and created a road roller. You cannot take anything there. That is why there is, it is a kacha airfield. You saw, na? it is unpaved. It is kacha. Yes, sir, you said airfield. So, sir, how do we make that? They have no things, means they have not, not wood, not brick, not cement. So, uh, you didn't see, it is ground, bache. there is no airfield. You didn't see the video correctly, I saw the thing. It is like your football field. You don't have to make football field. They just put a road roller on foot. So you they say? use that roller. And I want to ask you. Uh, please Excuse mute yourself. Uh, okay, please mute yourself first. Please mute yourself first. I'll, I'll, I'll give chance one by one. Please mute yourself first. Now, can I have some question from the teachers who are uh, in the audience? Yes. Teacher, teacher, uh, is there any teacher who want to ask question? Okay. Uh, since there there will be many questions, I have some one question maybe uh, uh, which any student yes, would like. Yes, uh, is, is is it possible for IL-76 to land on this um, uh, airfield, airstrip? Uh, no, no, no. The answer is no because uh, you saw the dust, yeah. amount of dust which is created. Okay. For jet engine, dust is further harmful. Okay. Okay. So, and the size of the aircraft and the maneuvering, mm -hmm. I showed you too, the mountains are very high, 20,000, 22,000. Yes. So, to turn within those mountains, such mm -hmm. bigger aircraft cannot do. It is very, very difficult. And secondly, it has got jet engines. Okay. Jet engines get affected quite a lot by uh, dust. Okay. And thirdly, rare rarefied atmosphere, you cannot switch off if such a big aircraft mm -hmm. gets unserviceable there. Okay. It will be very difficult to retrieve. You will have to leave it. It is a Christmas tree thereafter. Okay. Because no engine from any Sir, I have the question. world can be started uh, okay. at 16,700 Wait, wait. Sir, okay. I have a question. Yes, now you can ask Anjali. question. Anjali, please ask. Sir, my name is Anjali Kori. Uh, English school, uh, sir, what do you Then, yeah. sir, sir, why do uh, fighter planes fly on 20 January? Why do fighter why planes? Why they fly? Because sir, why do fighter planes fly on 26 January? Okay. Why? Do, why? Why? I told you. I told you. It is an occasion which has to be celebrated and when they are flying for fly pass, they are not doing only fun sake, it is training also for them. This close formation flying is a kind of training also for them. Plus, Republic Day is a very important uh, event for our country. That is why the fighters aircraft fly on Republic Day. Okay. Sir, uh, one more question. Uh, sure. you, you have already mentioned somewhere that uh, you did not want Lieutenant General Bhardwaj to accompany you in the plane because it would have uh, put more pressure on you. Did you really feel the pressure or it was then later on okay with you? Or your uh, no, no. Western Commanding Officer? No, no, no. Uh, I'll tell you Sorry, excuse I me. Just, just wait, beta. Just wait. Wait, wait. Wait, wait. Wait, yes, wait, wait. Okay. Yes, sir. 
uh, you know we have to carry very few people we have to carry minimum load for the trial landing that is why only air marshal borbora was on board as a passenger mm -hmm. and uh, lieutenant general bharadwaj was already at the airfield okay so going into the airfield we had to take lesser load because of the uh, you i told you performance graph we were operating beyond performance graph yes so there was nothing that they don't uh, travel in the cockpit so they were coming as passengers but we couldn't carry him because of the load okay now question akshita pande ke na akshita pande i give i give chance to akshita pande another question then sir i was the question no no akshita pande will ask question now akshita pande you you can ask question sir yes i don't want to and as zero dance here our blood please mute yourself only akshita will ask question akshita pande yes please yeah um स्मॉल प्लेसेस वेर देर आर नो रोड एंड रेलवे sometimes the weather goes bad for almost 8 8 10 10 days there. so when the weather goes bad if you don't operate every day they cannot stock the things which are required so when the weather goes bad for that also they stock so almost throughout the year we fly and in that area you can't fly beyond 2 o'clock so you have to start the flying right in the morning 5:30 onwards till 1:32 you have to be out of the hill because of very high speeds high wind speeds the aircraft there is a lot of turbulence there is a lot of uh, visibility problem so we fly every day almost around 65 to 70000 tons of load is dropped there including passengers so you can imagine nowhere in the world such activity takes place so it's a very big job which is done by air force station chandigarh Okay, there are the bigger aircraft C-17, IL-76, IL-76. Do okay. this job. Now, Karishma Tanija will ask question. Karishma Tanija will ask question. Others please. Sir, at zero degree temperature, our blood freezes. How we can survive there? No, blood doesn't freeze, beta. Blood doesn't freeze, but the uh, aircraft engine oil and fuel does freeze. So we have got some methodology for that. Your blood will not freeze. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Sir, I have a question. No, uh, sir. Sir, yeah, yes, boys and girls, we are now running short of time. Sir, so, last question from Karishma Tanija. Karishma, Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, please ask the question. Big salute to you. Yes, please ask. Sir, the question. I am. Sir, I am Karishma from Class Six Faith Academy, and I wanted to ask that. How did you feel when you reached there and when you got the Surya Chakra? Ah, uh, see, when I was doing this job, I didn't know I will get Surya Chakra <laughs> because the government liked my job. They gave me Surya Chakra. Okay. So you never work for Surya Chakra. You work for your country, and if you do a good job, the country will recognize you. When I was landing, I only knew one thing that I have to do this for the soldiers who are. posted there so that they are comfortable okay and the uh, difficulties they face can be reduced that is why i landed there and it was very important for our nation strategically yes. okay so uh, it was a military task and in that i got the shot okay uh, so yes the question is okay now uh, good afternoon sir Now we are running short of time. Yes, boys and girls. Now no questions, no questions. So just one question. Yeah. Sir, what happen for the air bridge? Air bridge sir. is a, yeah. sir has already explained. That is basically flying from Chandigarh to the location and you know transporting the material. That is basically air bridge. What he say? Uh, analogy he has given. Okay. Sir, question please. Now no more sir, questions, please. Question, uh, please You can mail us and then we'll we'll forward it to. Oh, Madam Kumar sir. No, no. My school is government, but sir, you are a fool. 
Okay. Hello. Yes, boys and girls, Hello. now please, please unmute yourself now. Sir, I muted. Mute yourself. Please mute yourself first. Please mute. Sir, yeah, you are mute. You mute yourself. No, everyone. no, I'm not. Everyone. Sir, I was the last question. No, I'm muted, yaar. Pa, pa, no. Last question. Sir, I was the last question. अरे मुझे mute कर दो. कि last question mute कर दो. Last question that is. Now so please, all of you, all of you, please listen. Uh, we have to make uh, certain discipline. We have to be very disciplined once you are listening to uh, such a high rank officer. So now please mute yourself. Okay, let us make this discipline now. Mute yourself. Now since we have lot of questions, I I I will uh, put one email ID over there, and you can put your questions, and we'll forward those questions to. uh to uh, surya khan chintaman sir and then he can uh, give those answers and we'll forward to you later on now uh, you all have listened him and basic the crux of the story was that how he planned how he taken a decision how the coordination between different agencies was there how difficult it was he has assessed it, the difficulty i mean the that calculated risk he has taken and you know there was a perfect coordination between the man and machine he was handling the machine and a lot of other uh, other kind of things so a perfect story of uh, coordination planning and strategic um, uh, strategy of behind landing at the highest altitude when you grow up in your life maybe some of you will be pilot so the first seat should be born from here and you later on you can build the story and build your career over in the air force so with these words uh, i formally ask my colleague shri dinesh malik to extend a vote of thanks thank you kalas ji and thank you surya khan sir aapka lecture bahut hi bahut hi acha tha aur aapne jo kaam kiya hai ye hamare desh ki seva ke liye ek bahut hi bada kaam hai hamari suraksha ko lekar to main aapko salute karta hu on from all my national science center team और मैं सभी पार्टिसिपेंट जितने भी यहाँ पे ऑडियंस बैठी है सबको बोलूंगा कि एक बार अनम्यूट करके क्लैप करें सर के लिए प्लीज तो ये एक ऐसा काम है जो हमारे देश के लिए बहुत इम्पोर्टेंस का काम है सर प्लीज अनम्यूट प्लीज म्यूट योर माइक प्लीज सर आज आपने बच्चों को बहुत इंस्पायर किया कि वो भी एक एयर फोर्स के अंदर या एयर एज ए एयर पायलट अपने कैरियर को चूज करें आई थिंक बच्चों को बहुत ही इंस्पिरेशन मिला तो सबसे पहले सर मैं आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद हूँ जो आज आपने हमारे लिए टाइम निकाला और इस रिपब्लिक डे ईव को हमारे लिए एक वैल्यूएबल और एक रिमेम्बर जो हम जिंदगी भर याद रखेंगे ऐसी एक ईव बनाई मैं साथ ही साथ धन्यवाद देता हूं सभी बच्चों का सभी लोगों का जो हमारे साथ इस लेक्चर के लिए आज जुड़े और आज का लेक्चर रियली में बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग था मैं तो एक एक वर्ड को बहुत गौर से सुना और कितनी मेहनत हमारी आर्मी के लोग करते हैं किन किन कंडीशनों में काम करते हैं ये आज हमने सीखा मेरे को लगता है कि बच्चों के पास भी बहुत सारे क्वेश्चन थे जिनका अभी भी बच्चों के पास क्वेश्चन है जिनका वो आंसर चाहते हैं दे आर वेरी क्यूरियस तो yes, आप सबका भी बहुत बहुत, बहुत धन्यवाद ऐसे लेक्चर हम और आगे भी कराएंगे और आप लोगों से उम्मीद है कि आप लोग आगे भी हमारे साथ में जुड़ते रहेंगे और अभी सर से मैं एक बार और रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि सर एक लेक्चर और बताइएगा कि एरोप्लेन या फाइटर प्लेन्स को उड़ाने में क्या क्या डिफरेंस रहता है कैसे कैसे उड़ाते हैं कैसे कैसे आप डिफरेंट पैरामीटर्स को कंट्रोल करते हैं एक लेक्चर सर उसके ऊपर भी आप हमें जरूर दें और ताकि बच्चों को भी पता चले कि क्या क्या साइंस इन्वॉल्व है एयरप्लेन फ्लाइंग के अंदर सर आप सबका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद सभी बच्चों का बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद और जितने भी हमारे साइंस सेंटर की टीम है जो इस लेक्चर को सक्सेसफुल बनाने के लिए जुड़ी हुई थी उनका भी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद और फिर एक दूसरे मौके पर हम सब लोग फिर से मिलेंगे जय हिंद जय हिंद जय हिंद थैंक यू